I've been working on that for some time now. Oh, okay. So I'm trying to... You know what you should try to do? Get into the honors program and try to do that as your research program. That's what I've been trying to do. Don't take time. You're the subject. Well, um, let, let's get started here. The chart method is going to use this chart, the chart I handed out. Um, that chart, you need two reference points on that chart. Um, one is F2 fluorine. Fluorine is the strongest oxidizer on the chart. It's at the top left. Okay. The strongest reducer on the chart, there's a conjugate relationship here with oxidizers and reducers as well. The strongest reducer on the chart is lithium here. Okay, so the strongest oxidizer is fluorine. The strongest reducer is lithium. What is the weakest oxidizer on this chart? Probably the, is it the one at the bottom? Probably the one that has zero. So H? Uh, no, no, it's the one that's negative. The lead? Lithium? Uh, lithium ion. Lithium ion is the weakest, but if you look at the chart, water is at the bottom. And so isn't water the weakest? No, water is not the weakest. We have to use these numbers here. These numbers are called um, half potentials. And if you look at that number, it's minus 0.828. So water actually is here, which means it's between Cn2 plus and Al3 plus. And so water is not the worst oxidizer on the chart. Li plus is the worst oxidizer. Water somewhere up here. No, water is not. Oh, and so the, the, that separate chart at the bottom um, is not a continuation. It's just some of the reactions removed from the main chart there. That's it. We can still place them inside of it. Yeah, we can still place them based on the number. So we're going to use this chart. All right, here's where the initial memorization comes up. The initial memorization is just you, wanna, you don't want to memorize this chart. It's too much to memorize, but you want to see if you can Look for patterns, yeah. And so one of the easiest patterns to spot are the reducers. What was the strongest reducer on the chart again? Li. Li. And so what do all the strong reducers have in common? These are all strong reducers here. What do all the strong reducers have in common? Watch it more. one and two. Not water. Yeah, they're all group one and two what? They're all metals, yeah. Metals are what we call electron rich. Electron rich, um, well, reducers are electron rich. They can give up electrons. And so that's one of the patterns. Metals are strong reducers. Yeah. Especially the group one and group two. As you get to the transition, they're less and less. All right, then we look at um, the strong oxidizers. What do the strong oxidizers have in common? That's more complex, you know, because there are multiple patterns here. And so this is the initial part, the initial kind of memorization. But not really memorization, because we don't want to memorize this, but we look at it. We look at it and we think, you know, um, what do they share in common, if anything? Right, so if you know this chart, and knowing this chart is just as simple as just reading through it once in a while, you know? Up here are the strong oxidizers, in the middle are the moderate oxidizers, at the bottom are the weak. Down here are the strong reducers, moderate reducers, weak reducers. There. So if we, if we just read through this chart once in a while, then we'll have a wealth of chemical knowledge. For example, dichromate. Is dichromate, what is that? Oxidizer, reducer? Oxidizer. It's an oxidizer. Is it a strong oxidizer? Moderate oxidizer? Weak? It's a strong oxidizer. Yeah. And so we can get that. Then um, eventually we start thinking more theoretically, you know, why is dichromate a strong oxidizer? You know, based on structure and composition, but we'll do that later. Initially we'll just learn some of the species here. All right, so um, the chart method is very similar to the acid-base method. In step one, what we do is we inventory the species, the major species present, and then we find the strongest oxidizers. So we, we look for all the oxidizers and then pick the strongest present. 
Yeah, well, one highest up on the left. And then we look for the strongest reducer present. So we ID all the reducers and just pick the strongest one on the bottom right, you know, closest to the bottom right. Lithium and chlorine. It's similar to the acid base chart. Okay, next, um, we combine the strongest oxidizer with the strongest reducer. But the way we're going to combine it is we're going to copy down what are called the half reactions. The half reactions are the reactions that are written there. And then we add up the half reactions, we make sure the electrons balance, and then uh, we simplify, and then we look for a driving force, and then that method yields the NIE. So let's take a look at an example of this here. Okay, copper and nitric acid. Do that first. Okay, uh, copper and nitric acid. Um, first off, we got to write the formula. What's the formula for copper? Cu. Cu, Cu or Cu2 plus? Uh, Cu. Cu. Solid? Solid. Yeah. yeah, that's correct. Cu2 plus is not called copper, it's called copper ion. Different properties. All right. Uh, nitric acid? HNO3. HNO3. Hey, wait a minute. Doesn't this look familiar? The pattern. What kind of pattern is this? Single replacement. If it's single replacement, what does it form? Copper. Copper nitrate. <coughs> copper 1 nitrate or copper 2 nitrate? Copper two. Copper two. It turns out copper two is more common. So copper two nitrate has what, so what formula? Uh, C two. No, C U two. C U N O three. But the N O three is right? Oh, N O three. N O two. Yeah. Okay. All nitrates are soluble. And. Plus H two. H two. Yeah. Yes. I leave it off. Same there, I leave it off. But yes. And then we put it Correct. We balance it. Hey, what's the driving force? Gas formation? Gas for me? No. 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 Gas formation doesn't we work. We have to use the activity series. When we compare copper with hydrogen, which one's more stable? Let's say um, if you're going to fly on an airplane, would you rather fly with hydrogen gas or copper metal? Copper metal. Hydrogen gas is like the um, Hindenburg. And so, what this means is that copper is less active, more stable. Yeah, and this is more active. Oh, for Less stable. Yeah, no Right, no reaction. And so, um, basically, this side's more stable, lower energy. That side is less stable. And so this is an uphill. No reaction here. So what we can say is NR, like this, or we could draw an arrow pointing backwards. I think the driving force is going backwards. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. But it turns out that um, there is a redox reaction between these. And so uh, this is actually uh, this particular reaction doesn't happen, so we could say no reaction for single replacement. But what is the reaction that happens here? The redox reaction that happens here. And so this is the problem with um, with single replacement. Um, single replacement has a number of known uh, failures, and this is one of the failures of single replacement. Single replacement just doesn't work here. And so what do you do if there are a number of known failures? Option one is you make sure your book contains none of those failures and everything works. And so um, that's what uh, happens in our book. It's not going to include any of the failures, just the successes. But the problem is, is that just because Krakowicz doesn't, doesn't mean the next person won't. You know? And so you're going to be in trouble. If you think there's no re redox reaction, there is a redox reaction. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to use the chart method. The chart method is more powerful than single replacement. Um, and you don't even need the single replacement form to do the chart method. You could have any form you want. For example, you could take HCl, nitric, and gold and do it, the chart method with that. The drawback of the chart method is it takes a little bit more time, but it's easy. And so the first step is let's inventory. So what, what's present? We have copper, metal. We have H+. Plus. We have nitrate, and there's one more species that's present. Water. Water is the most abundant species, but water, you know, water is often ignored because it's weak. You know, it's a weak acid, it's a weak base, it's a weak oxidizer, it's a weak reducer. It's weak. Yeah, because nitric acid is a strong acid. Can you, separate it? you can separate it that way. So if there are weak acid, you still separate it? If it's weak acid, you don't separate it. You keep it together. But you have you realize that H plus can react nonetheless. And so we look for copper. Do you see copper here? Yes, yeah, in the middle. Well, it's, it's you know, the metals are kind of on the right side, and there it is. There's copper. Is it a reducer or an oxidizer? Uh, well, on the right side are the and on the left side are the oxidizers. So it's on the right side, therefore it's a reducer. And so we're going to call it RA, reducing agent. RA. I don't see copper. Oh, I do. Copper is here on the left side too. But that's the ion. Yeah. This is the ion. That is the, the metal. And so I don't have any ion present, so I'm looking at this. Okay, then I go to H plus and I look for H plus. Do I see it? Oh yeah. H plus? Yeah, do you see H plus? Uh, I see it up there. Oh two H plus? Uh, let's use this one here. That one's near the top. Yeah, that one is. Can we use that one? Uh, no. We can't use that one because we're missing something. What are we missing? You know what O3 is called? Ozone. Do we have any ozone? No. There's no ozone, so we can't use that. Can we use both of them? Um, can we use this one? No. No, no because we're missing hydrogen peroxide. Can we use this one? No. No, we can't use any of these. We need H plus alone. Here it is. H plus alone. Is that what an oxidizer or reducer? Reducer. Oxidizer. So weak oxidizer. It's a moderate oxidizer. It's in the middle. Um, this chart keeps going down to the floor. So moderate oxidizer. Okay, then we look for nitrate. Do you see any nitrate present? Yes. Oh, here. Here, but we need something else. What do we need? We need H plus. If we don't have this H plus, then it doesn't quite work because we don't have the right ingredients to make it work. But we do have H plus. We just need a lot of H plus. That's okay, nitric acid. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to put this bar over these and call this combination the oxidizing agent. It's nitrate and H plus is the oxidizing agent. And then I look for water. Do you see water? I see water here, but there's a problem with this water. No O2. How about this water? Is that good? Uh, no. Yeah, this water is good. But what about this water down here? Which one's better? That one, because that one's liquid. Well, this is liquid. This is liquid. This is 2H2O liquid. This is 2H2O liquid. Which one should we use? The bottom one. The bottom one? We should use the bottom one. Why? Because it's just pure, I guess it's just water and oxygen. No, we always use the stronger one. Which one's stronger? The stronger one is the one closest to the lithium. And so this water is stronger than that water. Is there another water that's stronger than this? Why is this water stronger than that water? Isn't water just water? The reason is, is because of the products. What we have to do is we have to imagine going backwards here. If we go backwards, water gets converted into 
whereas this water gets converted into oxygen. Well, oxygen is more stable than hydrogen peroxide, so this is more favorable. It makes more stable product. And so this water is better. Are there any other waters? Uh, no, not alone. There aren't any other waters, so this is the water we use. The water is a reducing agent. But um, we did see water before. The bottom here, the bottom left. If I look at the bottom left, what is water here? It's an oxidizing agent. And its position, remember, is between aluminum and zinc and ions. And so it's both. Water can either be an oxidizing agent or a reducing agent. There are a number of species that are both. When that occurred for acids and bases, we called them amphoteric. When it occurs for redox, there's no special name for them. You know, they can go either way. And so um, there are a lot of species that can go either way. Here. All right, the next step is uh, we pick the strongest oxidizer and the strongest reducer. So how many oxidizers do we have? We have H plus alone, we have nitrate with H plus, and then we have water. And so let's start off with the strongest oxidizer. What is the strongest oxidizer on the chart? H plus. Yeah, the strongest oxidizer on the chart is F2. And then let's see which one we hit first. We hit nitrate. Do you see that? And so nitrate plus H plus. This is the strongest oxidizer. Okay, let's look for the strongest reducer. We'll start at lithium and work our way up. Lithium. It looks like the first one we hit here is copper. And then water's way up here. And so uh, the strongest reducing agent is copper. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to copy the equations down. So for nitrate and H plus, we just copied off the chart. It's NO3 minus, it's near the top, plus 4H plus, plus 3 electrons, yields NO gas, plus 2 H2O liquid. We'll just copy that right off the chart. Now, for copper, we don't copy it right off the chart. If we were to copy it right off the chart, it's Cu2 plus, but we don't have any Cu2 plus, we have Cu metal. So if we have Cu metal, the only way it can go is reverse here. So what we need to do is we need to flip this backwards, starting with Cu solid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this. So I go Cu solid goes to Cu2 plus, plus two electrons. And so this reaction I had to flip because I have copper as the reactant, not copper two plus. And so one of the equations you're going to have to flip. Okay, the next step is uh, we're going to add these two together. But before I do that, I want to analyze this. Nitrate and H plus, what's that? Our oxidizer or reducer? Oxidizer. This is our oxidizer. Now there's a conjugate relationship. Oxidizers take electrons. So if I go four, I'm taking three electrons. Reducers give up electrons. So if I go backwards, what's happening? If I go backwards, I'm losing three electrons. And so NO and H2O, this is my reducing. And this is a conjugate pair. So we have our oxidizer here and our reducer here, and they're conjugate pairs. Do you see that? The same thing goes here. The copper is our reducing agent. Therefore, copper 2 plus must be our oxidizing agent. Okay, I do this at this stage to um, make uh, figure out the driving force a little easier. Okay, now what we have to do is we have to combine the equations, but when we combine the equations, we have to make sure the electrons balance. So the first equation uses up three electrons, the second equation generates two electrons as product. They don't match. One needs three, the other only has two. So what we're going to do is we're going to just change the ratios of this by multiplying. So rather than using one nitrate, if we use two nitrates, two nitrates will generate six electrons. And rather than using one copper, we use three coppers. Three coppers will generate six electrons and then combine them. 
so when I add up, I'm going to add up all the, all the reactants and then add that up to all the products. So adding up all the reactants, I'm going to get here of two nitrates plus eight H plus plus six electrons. So that's all the reactants on the top and then the reactants on the bottom. Three copper solids plus three copper solids. This is going to produce, then add up everything on the right, 2NO plus 4H2O liquid. 2NO gas plus 4H2O liquid. And then um, we'll add the bottom, 3Cu2 plus plus six electrons. Okay, now the electrons are balanced. Um, there are six electrons that we need to consume here and there are six electrons that are being generated. The electrons have to cancel each other out like spectators cancel out in the ionic equation. Going to a net ionic equation. And then we look, is there any other thing we could simplify? No, this is it. All right, the next step here. So well, what I did was I uh, combined the strongest oxidizer with the strongest reducer using their half reaction. I made sure the number of electrons consumed is equal to the number of electrons lost by changing the coefficients if necessary. Simplify, so I simplified it, um, I canceled out the electrons. Determine a driving force. So now we gotta look for a driving force. And so what was the nitrate in H plus? The Cu. Metal is reducer, NO and water, and copper 2 plus. Okay, now I'm going to compare the two oxidizing agents nitrate and H plus versus copper 2. So let's go back to the chart. Look, which one's stronger? Nitrate H plus versus copper 2. Here's nitrate and H plus, here's copper 2. Nitrate and H plus is stronger. So we're going from a stronger oxidizing agent to a weaker oxidizing agent. Because of the conjugate relationship, we must be going from a stronger reducing agent to a weaker reducing agent. And so let's take a look at the reducing agents here. Copper here versus NO and H2O up there. Copper is better. And so we have driving force here. If there's driving force, this is downhill. You know, we're going from less stable, stronger to more stable, weaker. And so I'm um, just going to simplify this, and that is, I'm going to get rid of some of this canceling out stuff. And so I get two nitrates plus H plus plus three Cu solids goes to two NO gas plus four H2O liquid plus three Cu2 plus. And so what happens here is this. The nitric acid eats up the copper metal. It's going to eat, eat it up and dissolve the copper metal. It dissolves it chemically, though, by converting it into copper 2 plus. It's not a physical process, but a chemical process. NO gas is generated in that particular reaction. And so um, what we can see is that single replacement predicted nitric acid didn't react with copper metal. But um, the chart method did. So let's take a look at this reaction. nitric acid. What's that green color? The green color is copper two ions. Green blue. That's illegal. Yeah, it is illegal. You know? Yeah, they destroy money. 
So if you rip a dollar bill, that's illegal. But piss or second, is that all work? It's a federal crime. No one's going to arrest you. <laughs> What's that? Why is it red? Actually, in some review as well. We don't have much time, unfortunately. Driving force of the NIE or something like that. Can we just do this 
Yeah, on a sheet of paper because it's kind of uh, longer. All right, the next uh, reaction can be lead, carbonate, and sulfuric acid. This, I need the CB, the IE, actually CB driving force, IE, and IE. This one is metathesis. Let's give you some hints here. All of these is driving force for C. Oh, chemical reactions. Next one is going to be ammonium. Chloride solution.
Well, some uh, examples of the three basic types of chemical reactions. You know, metathesis, acid base, redox. We don't have much time, so just maybe get started today and then we'll continue it next time.